Hello, today we're going to talk about a 2000 Toyota Corolla with drivability problems including hard starting, stumbling idle, and stalling. This 2000 Corolla uh, has the one ZZ engine with uh, VVTI, the variable valve timing with intelligence. And it's a fairly advanced engine, so um, there's a number of things that can cause it to have hard starting, a stumbling idle, and uh, stalling. But um, I don't have a scan tool to really look and see what the sensors are outputting. Um, if you do have a scan tool, what you can do is you can monitor individual sensors and see if you can find any telltale signs. But for this particular scenario, I think it's a mass airflow sensor, and uh, here's why. Um, poor idle could be valve adjustments uh, on this engine, or really with any engine. Um, but this particular engine, it's got uh, bucket and shim style valves. And Toyota designed this engine to be really maintenance free, so it's fairly rare to find a crawl that's had the valves adjusted and it'll manifest itself in having a worse idle over time and that can be corrected um, by doing a valve adjustment but in this case I don't believe this car's ever had one. Okay, um, poor engine compression could also give you uh, low power but again that would happen you know slowly over time it's not going to happen over the uh, span of a couple months so I feel pretty confident that that's not what's causing the um, the issues with this car. Okay, so for engine to run properly, we've got the engine's uh, trinity, which would be earth, wind, and fire. Uh, earth being fuel, wind being air, and fire being spark. So if it was a fuel issue, let's say it was a, a weak or dying fuel pump, uh, it would manifest itself more when you're driving at high speed on the highway where you'd need uh, more fuel delivery. Um, you know, if it was in the process of dying, that's where you'd really notice it. But if the fuel pump was that bad that the car wouldn't even start, again, it's possible that it would have been noticed before now. But since it will occasionally start, I don't think it's the fuel pump. Um, clogged fuel injectors, it's really unlikely. As long as you're buying normal fuel from a normal gas station and, you know, not out of a shopping cart at the side of the road or out of water bottles from some guy under an overpass, it's just hard to get fuel that dirty to really foul the fuel injectors. But if you have huge mileage on the car, it's possible, but this car doesn't have that, so it seems really unlikely. And uh, as far as the fuel filter goes, this particular Corolla doesn't have one. It actually has a fuel strainer in the fuel pump, and uh, it's a lifetime fuel strainer. So, you know, air would have to be a lot of trash in the fuel to clog that up. So, in this case, I really don't think it's a fuel-based issue. But, you know... Um, it might end up, end up being the case, but in this case, I really don't think Okay, so. the next thing could be is uh, fire, or sparks. Um, so the spark plugs for this particular engine need to be iridium. They're long-life spark plugs that should last about 160,000 kilometers or 100,000 miles. Um, so this car is about uh, has about that mileage, so the spark plugs could be older. But again, it's a very slow progression to get to the point where it's actually going to run badly and having the combination of hard starting, stumbling idle, and stalling, you know, the spark plugs would have to be in really tough shape. And in this case, I, I really don't think so. And um, <coughs> this car also doesn't have a distributor or rotor on it either. It's got coil packs on top of the spark plugs. And um, if you had one fail, you'd have a very definite uh, cylinder miss, but the rest of them would be fine you wouldn't have uh, really an across the board running issue um, and having more than one quail pack fa fail at the same time is vanishingly unlikely. So I, I don't think that's the issue in this case. Okay, that brings us to the air side of the equation. So uh, we can check the air filter for free fairly easily. We've got the two tabs here, you just pull back, lift up and back on the box and you can have a look at the air filter. Um, this filter is brand new or so I'm told. Yep, that's as new as it gets. So the air filter isn't the issue. So let's talk about how the air gets into the engine. So we've got um, the air cleaner here, and then it travels past the mass airflow sensor here, and it goes down to uh, the throttle plate here with the butterfly. And this butterfly here can get dirty, and that would be more that would manifest itself more as an idle issue. Um, because there's a small uh, hole in it to let idle air through when it's fully closed. But there's also a, um, a possibility of getting debris around it that it can be cleaned. But the butterfly would be open under throttle. So if you're having drivability issues where it's tricky to start, but it stumbles whilst it's driving, um, it's likely that it's not um, the butterfly here in the throttle plate. So 
this leads me to the mass airflow sensor, and that's why I'm suspicious of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick test to check it out. Okay, so what we're going to do to confirm my suspicion is we're going to take out the mass airflow sensor. We're going to spray it with a uh, mass airflow sensor cleaner or contact cleaner and see if the car performs any different. If it does, then that will prove my suspicion that something is up with this mass airflow sensor. Okay, the first step is we're going to unhook this electrical connector. You just pinch and wiggle the connector out. And, and then this one has cruise control, so this arm is in the way, so we're going to unbolt that. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. Okay, then lastly we're going to remove the mass airflow sensor. It's just a Phillips, and there's two screws here. So we'll just unscrew this one. And we'll unscrew the next one, and then you just twist it out. Okay, here's the uh, mass airflow sensor removed from the airbox. Um, mass airflow sensor could cause these issues because it simultaneously measures the air temperature and the flow of the air uh, by heating a wire uh, to a particular temperature and keeping it at that temperature regardless of airflow. And uh, on the mass airflow uh, sensor here you can see this little uh, ball thing here that measures the temperature. But in here, I'm not sure if you can uh, see it, but there's two wires and uh, this is known as a hot wire style mass airflow sensor and uh, what it does is uh, those wires are heated to a particular uh, temperature and um, it measures the current to keep it at that temperature so when there's more air blowing past it, it takes more current to keep it at the specified temperature and it sends its air temperature and flow measurements to the car's computer and the ECU then uses that to map how much fuel to feed the engine uh, a math has no moving parts and will only trigger an engine light if it has a dead short. So it has to be absolutely failed to show uh, an engine light and this car doesn't have that. Now the one thing that can cause a mass airflow sensor to go bad is that it's self-cleaning. So these two wires in here, uh, when the car is turned off, it will heat up the wires and uh, clean any debris off there. Um, so over time the self-cleaning function uh, can damage the wire if there's debris on there or just by use over time. Uh, as a result of this, MAF cleaning isn't necessary for a regularly functioning vehicle, but we can use MAF cleaner to diagnose the suspicion. So if we clean the sensor right now, if the car starts and runs properly, we're going to know that the self-cleaning feature of this mass airflow sensor has died. I'm actually looking at it, it looks pretty clean. Uh, we'll know that the self-cleaning feature has died and that this mass airflow sensor needs to be replaced. Okay, here we've got a can of uh, some nice CRC mass airflow sensor sensor clean, um, but as long as it's a uh, cleaner that uh, evaporates at a low temperature with no residue, it should be fine. So we're talking like electrical contact cleaner, you know, the decent stuff. But, you know, when in doubt, just use actual mass airflow sensor cleaner. Um, to clean it. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray, spray liberally. So we're going to clean off, um, you know, the bulb there, um, the temperature sensing bulb. But what's really important is those two wires, um, those two wires in there. We want to make sure that they're sprayed and cleaned. We want to make sure that there's no debris uh, left in there. So you can see how this would go. work as well. This is the upstream side. So air will hit this plate be channeled down through uh, here over the hot wires and then back out the back side here. So we want to make sure that these two hot wires are nicely cleaned. And don't be shy, use all kinds of uh, cleaner here, it's fine. And don't forget the temperature bulb there. So we want to liberally spray, spray this uh, mass airflow sensor cleaner all over the place. And then let it I'm sorry you can't see it here but we've got a cloth here to catch all the drips. But it evaporates quite readily, so it's not too big uh, of a deal. sensor in here, so we're just going to tighten it up. And make sure we're all good. So I'll screw that in. Connect the electrical uh, connector there. And then we'll reinstall the, uh, the cable retainer there for the cruise control. Okay, the mass airflow sensor has now been reinstalled. Let's see if the car starts easily. Okay, so the car started good and it road tested okay, but it still seems like something's awry. 
Um, but it now runs, and it didn't start very easily before and ran very poorly. Um, so I think we're on the right track. It does appear that the mass airflow sensor is the variable that uh, we messed with, and we got a result. So I feel pretty confident that that's the issue. And it's tempting to believe that cleaning the mass airflow sensor solved the issue, but it's unlikely. Uh, since it's a maintenance-free part, um, just cleaning it out shouldn't be the cure, and usually wouldn't be. But sometimes you get lucky. Um, so in this case, it's going to need to be replaced. So when buying a replacement, it's uh, important not to buy a remanufactured one because I've had uh, headaches with those in the past where you know it just failed right out of the box, and then trying to fail, uh, return a failed electrical part is a real headache. Uh, the best idea is to buy a new OEM part. Now in this case, it's Denso, and um, the dealer would be really expensive for this part. But uh, if you look on Amazon, you can find a good deal, or you can call around to the local parts places. And um, But be sure to confirm the manufacturer and make sure it's not a really cheap vendor. Um, and if it's not a OEM Denso part, be sure to confirm their electrical component warranty as you may need to use it to um, replace a failed part. So when the new part comes in, uh, installed in the vehicle, just as shown here, and uh, that should be job done. Thanks for watching.